Hi guys, my name is Precious. I'm a food and lifestyle blogger at PreciousCore.com and you're welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make water fufu or cassava fufu from scratch. Now fufu is a staple in a lot of African countries. It's um, a starchy side that is eaten with soups or vegetables. It's mostly made out of some form of starch like corn or maybe um, yams, you know, or cassava. So I'm showing you the fermented cassava version of fufu and I'm going to be making it from scratch so I'll show you what we need and then we can make some water fufu so you need some cassava or yucca root as it is labeled in the stores here now back home you just need cassava water and you get good water fufu or cassava fufu or apu depending on how you call it but yeah I discovered that soaking just the cassava in water doesn't give me a good fufu because you actually have to soak it in water for a couple of days and let it ferment and then you can grind and you get your fufu. So I had to use baking soda you know when I was testing this recipe and with baking soda it works just fine. So you need the yucca roots. If you are in Africa you don't need baking soda but if you're not in Africa um, the cassava you buy from the stores have probably stayed for so long and they are not going to ferment um, naturally so you need something to stimulate that process so or to initiate that process so baking soda to the rescue <laughs> so I actually used about four big tubers of cassava. I already soaked it, fermented it, and I'm going to show you guys in a bit. And then I used two teaspoons of baking soda, and I put water above the cassava, and I covered it, and I let it ferment for about three days. You can leave it ferment for about three to five days. It could take uh, maybe two days, or it could take more. You just have to go in there and press it. If it's soft, you know, you know it's fermented. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a bit, but first, how to cut the cassava for the benefit of those who don't know. So the first thing is just to cut it into various pieces. I'm going to cut this one into about five or six pieces like so. Then what I like doing is you know just splitting one open while the skin is still on it like so then you just peel with a knife it's it, the skin comes up very easily sometimes i'll start it then i'll let my girls finish the peeling for me when i have a lot of cassava to work with then what's important to do is to take your knife and go into that middle part and take away any fiber we don't have a lot in this one you know but as you can see in this one we have quite a bit of that fiber there so it's always a good idea to take it off whether you're boiling your cassava or you're using to make fufu you know just take off some of that fiber yeah so that's basically how you know you peel the cassava and that's what i did i peeled some cassava i washed it thoroughly then i put in a plastic um container i have right here in my kitchen and i put water above the cassava then i put in my baking soda so i'm going to show you what it looks like after the fermentation process so this is my cassava after fermenting you can see how soft it is yours does not necessarily have to be this soft um you can still see some of the pieces of cassava what they look like and then i can press sometimes you don't have all of them get very soft don't sweat it out some may be soft some may not be and if you're not really keen on using baking soda you could use for which i wouldn't know why <laughs> you could put your cassava under the sun you know to I, there was a batch of water fufu i made here that i softened the cassava by putting it under the sun every day it took me about seven days or more to get soft and then my mom also told me i could boil water and you know place on the cassava just to create that environment of heat what it needs is heat to ferment so i'm going to be putting this in my super duper blender to blend so i'm going to be blending this in two batches and if you have a food processor you could use it you know it doesn't really have to be a blender back home we use like big grinding meals or sometimes we don't even really grind it at all we just when it's soft you know we just go ahead and press and take away the fiber from the cassava so you want to blend that to a smooth paste as smooth as possible 
Okay, it's all blended. And the smell is really pungent when you ferment it, so <laughs> don't be shocked by the smell. I mean, my daughter smelled it and she was like, oh my god, it's so, so pungent. I took all my spatula to use to clean this, but I'm using my hand. I guess I'm just a country girl. <laughs> I just love using my hand in the kitchen. Okay, you can see that now typically you will have to pass this through a strainer or a colander to take away things like this, you know, some of the leftover fiber from the cassava. But since I'm dealing with a small quantity, I'm not going to pass it through the strainer. I'll just use my hand, you know, to trace these things. But if you want to be double sure, you want to be very sure, you know, just pass it through. Straight I'm just using my hand to make sure that that is as smooth as possible. Just to add that, if you are going to pass this through, see, because it's um, you're making a bigger quantity or anything like that, you have to blend it with water or you add water to it to make it watery so you can easily pass through the strainer and you can um, catch the fiber easily. You know, but I'm not doing any of that because I want it to remain as thick as possible and I'm going to be cooking it right away. So I'm not going to go through the whole process of um, pressing it to get hard in a few days. I'm going to be cooking this right away so I could show you guys too. So I'm just putting in a really, really nice clean kitchen cloth in my bowl. I'm just going to squeeze this lightly, you know, not too much because I'm cooking it right now. Typically back home, we will make this like when I was living with my grandma when I was young, we used to make a lot of water for food. We'll make a huge quantity that will fill a bag. I don't know, maybe a 50 pound bag, you know, like a really big bag of rice. And then when we grind and, you know, take out all the fiber or strain and all that, we are going to put it in the bag and then put big stones on top and leave it, let it stay outside for a few days. The stones are going to squeeze out the excess water, you know. <laughs> That's the way we used to do it. So, okay, today I'm making a really little quantity. So I'm just putting it in my cloth here just to squeeze out a little bit of water, not much. Let's see. Squeeze out because we don't want to cook it and it turns out too so soft. It's better it's a little hard then we can add water to make it you know as soft as we want rather than if it's too soft oh my god there's nothing you can do about it I remember I had a cousin who always spoil his water for food like each time he makes it <laughs> it's a guy actually you always turn out too soft then sometimes you have to run maybe to the market to buy more and then mix some to be hard then mix with us the, and then mix the hard one with the soft one. Oh my god it was crazy so you can see the amount of water that we've gotten out of that. Let's see, just get a little bit more, not too much because I'm cooking this baby right now. And that should be it. Let me open it and now let's see what it looks like. Uh, water for food. No matter where you are, you guys, if you can find cassava, you can find yucca. You can make this, don't be afraid. If you're, you know, you're really craving for water for food, for cassava for food, go get that yucca and it's fun. I mean, I find homemade things like this fun. Look at, look at how authentic that is. Oh my God, what is a hair doing there? Okay, look at that. That is perfect to go into our pot, so. So, I'm just putting it into my pot here. Now I'm going to go in there with my hand and just this little thing, take it out. I'm just going to mix because you know in the process of squeezing some parts may get harder than other. And now I'm looking at this and I think it needs just a little bit of water, you know. Okay, just 
being careful so I don't spoil it like my cousin <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah just a little bit more and that's it because even though we don't want it to be too soft at the same time I don't want it to be too hard when it's too too hard it becomes difficult to stir I think I can still trace fiber there now it's time to set it on the fire and I'm just going to show you guys how to cook your water for food no matter the soup you want to eat it with so let's place this on here I'm going to wash my hands in a bit but first turn it on medium heat cover it just for about two minutes don't go anywhere it's not something you put and forget we are because we are going to start stirring in just two minutes so it's been there for about two minutes and you know how you know it's time to start stirring is when it starts cooking from the bottom and you know you're either going to see like a lot of vapor coming up and then you're also going to see it you know starting to cook the texture has changed it looks um different the one at the bottom so how we cook this is we just keep stirring mixing the one cooking at the bottom with the one on top and just you know you just keep stirring and stirring and before you know it everything is going to be looking the same from time to time you could just let it rest like for two minutes while it's at this stage you know just so that you're not like a stirring machine then you go back in and stay don't let it rest for too long because it's going to form lumps and I'm doing this on medium heat but if you're working with a larger quantity and you want to increase that heat or if you you know it notice that it's not cooking quickly you may want to increase or if it's cooking too fast you may want to reduce it so I'm going to show you guys what it looks like you know when everything is like halfway cooked So this is what uh, what the food looks like, you know, halfway through cooking. It's still very white. It's not done yet. And I've been stirring for about five minutes. And the more you stir, the harder it gets. I just use one hand to hold the pot. Then I use the other hand to stir. And if it gets too hot, I'm going to use a pot holder or something. Now. Sometimes I'll have someone hold the pot for me so I can really do a good job at stirring. So that's what it looks like, you guys. I'm still mixing, so everything should be one. That's halfway through. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it is fully cooked. Okay, it's not quite done yet, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, what it looks like. Like three quarters done. And now it's really hard, like... If I take this to the end without adding some water, it's going to be so, so hard. So I'm going with just a little bit of water. I don't want to add too much. Because you don't want to make it too soft. Remember, there's really no way to remedy it if it's so soft, you know. Now, another thing about, you know, stirring water fufu is that you have to keep pressing it to the side, like so. That just helps it to mix better. You cannot just go like mixing it together you have, you're stir, you're stirring and you're pressing so the ones that have cooked can mix with the parts that have not cooked then all can you know become one so i've added in just about a quarter cup of water i'm going to see if i need more it's always a good idea to just keep that water on the side and i'm adding it in very little bits because i'm very careful i don't want to spoil this you can see that it's turn into an off-white color which means it's almost ready when it's still very white it's not done but when it's like you know kind of cream white or so I'm going to need a little bit more water okay now I've added more water just a little bit more just about half a cup I just want to say that when you add water like this you could you know let cover the pot and let it cook for a few minutes maybe you know from about two to five minutes um if you're doing making do with a very large quantity that's essential so you can rest from stirring but since it's small i'm not going to do that i'm just going to stir until it is all done 
Oh my god, you guys, it is ready. See how perfect that is. The perfect texture. Um, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. I've tasted it, it is so good. I can't wait to eat this with some arrow, which is what we typically eat water for food with in Cameroon. You could enjoy this with any soup you want. So the next thing we're going to do is just mold it. Mm, 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 mm. So good, my God. You can see that I have a couple of um, wooden, a wooden spoon and something like a pencil or a pencil that I use when the fufu got a little bit too slippery. I just wanted to show you guys. So if you encounter that situation, you may have to change the spoon you're using or something, you know, just to make it easier for you. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just taking my spatula and dipping into a bowl of water. Then I'm also just going to lightly, you know, put some water on this plate. Then I'll cut some of my fufu, depending on the quantity you want, how big or how small, you know, like so. Now I'm going to dip my hand into water, clean hands of course. <laughs> Then I'm just going to go in and this is the process of just molding this into a lump of fufu. This is the way we do it, you know, just mold that so it's presentable, right? Some people will wrap this in plastic, you know, but I prefer just, you know, molding like so. Look at that. <laughs> and if it's too sticky to the pan, just dip your hand into water. And then, I mean, if you grew up in a West African country, you probably already know this. <laughs> this is for the benefit of those who didn't. Keep that. Repeat the same process. My fufu is all molded. And I have a little cute one on the side, which I'm going to be enjoying with arrow. Because what is water fufu without arrow? Now, there's a recipe for this. My mouth is watering already. Um, I'm going to link that in the description box below and somewhere up so you could see how to make arrow. They could actually eat your water fufu with you know any soup of choice, um, okra, a goosey soup, you know, maybe a traditional meal pertaining to your tribe, a traditional soup pertaining to your tribe. It is just so good. So let me dig in. Oh my god, the perfect texture rubbery not too soft not too strong it's not sticky when it's so soft it's going to be all sticky to your finger but you can see you know mm. so there's nothing like african food seriously especially those that you eat with your hand like this finger licking good mm -mm. Mm. i feel like i'm in a restaurant in Cameroon and I just ordered for fufu and arrow. So so authentic you guys. The fufu is like it's rubbery, the texture of water fufu. Um it doesn't have a peculiar taste to it. I mean it's a taste that's hard to describe if you've if you've tried water fufu before you know so so good. I hope you guys enjoyed spending time with me. For the full recipe, go to my blog preciouscore.com. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.